My name is Tata Moachi. I'm a plant scientist and a farmer from South Africa. And I run Lechaila Banaring Farms as well as a project called Rosero. And what we have done at Lechaila Banaring Farms is really to create an agricultural community that's economically viable. And how I've started all of that is that I identified that there was a lack of skill within the agricultural community. And um, it's when I, when I first started my project, I didn't have access to technical assistance and help, and I couldn't afford to get uh, professionals to assist me. So I decided to, tra to, to build a training facility on my farm, and what I do is I take young unemployed graduates, um, and I train them in three spheres. So we have a center of excellence, which we focus on business excellence, uh, technical excellence and compliance excellence. And our end product, we're trying to create agricultural entrepreneurs and we coin it as agripreneurs. And basically we have, we started this program and it's designed in two ways. We have a first year of an ingrowing process where they're on the incubation farm. And this is a stimulated environment where they get to learn about livestock, they get to learn about crop production, they get to learn about apiary, as well as processing um, value addition as well. And we also try and enable them to get skills in administration, IT, marketing, skills that can help in the value chain. Besides the challenge of building accommodation infrastructure and getting access to funding to actually have stipends for these um, young individuals, um, another challenge we have is inputs and mechanization. Um, we've been able to partner with some agricultural companies who help us with inputs and that benefits them because they're able to advertise their products and our students become brand loyal. Um, and then when it comes to mechanization and access to technology, that's where it has been difficult to really partner up with um, well-established technological businesses or people that have innovation, technologies that can enhance agriculture to come to the ground and speak to sm uh, smaller scaled farmers and be able to transfer that information. So in South Africa, there are a lot of young kids who are interested in agriculture and a lot of them have studied agriculture at diploma or university level. Now there's a disjunct between absorbing these kids into the work stream. It's either the only opportunities that you'll have is either extension services through government or through uh, be extension services through private sector, be it through a company. And that is very limited because those uh, companies can only absorb so many people. So it leaves a whole number of kids sitting at home who don't have access to land, who don't have access to finance, but have the skill and passion to farm. And when I first started my program, I simply wrote a post on Facebook saying I'm offering one apprenticeship to an individual. And by the end of the week, I had 200 CVs. At the moment, we're sitting around 300 in our database and we haven't even advertised at national level. This is just individuals from two different provinces showing interest in having this experiential learning experience. Now what attracts young people to this is that there's nothing else that offers them an opportunity like this. There's no other program or an apprenticeship in South Africa that's going to be able to give you not just technical skills but also auxiliary skills that will help you within the value chain. Another thing that attracts young people to the farm is we are able to assess them and have an assessment criteria that's um, well noted so we can be able to show um, individuals how technically sound this person is. So we've developed tools that will be able to monitor the students over the program from the in-growing and outgrowing process. And that's how we also place them in the outgrowing um, sessions to see what are their strong points. Are they technically strong in livestock or crop or are they more into IT and engineering? So we are able to identify skills and be able to now also place these students in the right hands. And I think what also makes our program differently is we actually place students in businesses. We identify key businesses that need those skills and we place them. And now we've getting many farmers and uh, commercial entities that are asking us for more students because they realize that we not just building young kids to be farmers, they are entrepreneurs. And with that 
with that difference, it actually helps their own entity. Um, many of our young farmers are also able to introduce new technologies to the to the where they're serving their internships. Um, they because they're dynamic, they've been exposed to innovation, and they've also been challenged in a stimulated and a real life environment. I think we do need support from donors, um, be it uh, through technical and maybe financial. Financial, maybe I'd say for infrastructure. And we also need support um, with private sector, get to get the private sector involved, to introduce these technologies to the young people. We really need help from donors to be able to now get to help us formalize that. There's only so much as an individual that I can do and build. I'm still trying to build a, a commercial entity, but if we have the right support when it comes to technical and well as policy to say that, you know, yes, our, our country say that they want to support young people, but they're not coming to the front. They, will, they will, can hear about our projects, but they, yes, because of uh, political circumstances, they, they might not see it as on their agenda. So we do need that push from organizations to now pressurize um, local governments and to pressurize and the national government also to say, this is the way forward. This is the type of projects you should be looking at. In South Africa, we are dealing with a problem where we have deactivated land. So a lot of land through land reform has been given to people in form of trust funds in communities and um, that land is sitting fallow. It's no longer active, it's no longer uh, doing anything and we've identified opportunity in that to say that these young people that we're putting through um, this program can be the individuals to activate that land. If governments uh, can come through and say, can say, here's the land, or we can, you know, use this land, then we can be able to put it back into um, into production. But the only way we can achieve that is if we formalize this business and we formalize the training academy. There's still a lot of components that need to be able to bring it up. I've mentioned them, and once those once it's running and we're able to run at full capacity and get much impact then we'll be able to now make a, a feasibility study I mean sorry an impact study to show that how has uh, what we're doing at the Khaila Banaring Farms impacted young people over the past five years and I think once we have that uh, high level type of report then we can start seeing the greater picture. Agriculture is risky if you don't have all the components unfortunately and unfortunately uh, most young people do not have the components and that's where we're trying to bridge the gap. We're trying to bridge the gap in education, we're trying to bridge the gap of innovation, um, we're trying to bridge the gap of being, having access to the basic inputs to production.